The Attorney General's Chambers, appearing for former Prime Minister Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad, ex-Minister Tan Sri Noor Mohamad Yaakob and Putrajaya, has applied to strike out the suit filed by Tan Sri Halim Saad. It said the businessman's suit is frivolous, vexatious and an abuse of the court process and asked for all proceedings to be suspended until a decision on its application is made. This application is fixed for hearing on May 14th next year. The bid to have the suit struck out is backed by an affidavit by Noor Mohammed, who said Halim had himself chosen to support the general offer for UEM without any inducements from the defendants. He affirmed that the takeover of Halim's stake was not done correctly compulsorily, as there had been a series of negotiations to finalise the compensation. The former minister added that Halim had agreed to the sum of 165 million ringgit, despite claiming that it was not ample compensation. The businessman maintains that he was forced to sell his stake in Renong and UEM, which then owned prized assets including the toll concession for the North-South Expressway. Petronas Gas saw its third quarter FY 2023 net profit rise 10% year-on-year on lower financing costs, taxes and expenses, though it shrank 3.5% quarter-on-quarter on the back of weaker sales, amid a planned plant turnaround in Kirti and lower product prices in the utilities segment. Earnings came in at 468.46 million ringgit, up from 425.82 million ringgit in the third quarter of FY 2022 and down from 485.37 million ringgit in the second quarter of FY 2023. Revenue fell 1% to 1.55 billion ringgit from 1.56 billion ringgit the previous year. It was down 5.3% from 1.64 billion ringgit in the immediate preceding quarter. Petgas declared a dividend of 18 cents per share. The company expects to deliver a strong financial performance in FY 2023. It said it would continue to strive for operational excellence as well as to strike the right balance between growth investments, financial prudence and shareholders' distribution amid the higher operating cost environment. Shares of Petgas traded 0.2% higher at 17 ringgit 18 cent at the close, giving it a market capitalization of 33.99 billion ringgit. Home improvement retailer Mr DIY Group Malaysia saw third quarter FY 2023 bottom line improve by some 22.5% year-on-year as new stores boosted revenue. Net profit stood at 123.95 million ringgit as top line jumped 10% to 1.07 billion ringgit. It declared an interim dividend of 0.8 cent per share. Looking ahead, CEO Adrian Ong said the group remains comfortably optimistic of its growth prospects given the current business environment. Mr DIY remains focused on the strategic expansion of its store network, optimising revenue per square foot and operational efficiency, which is key to driving financial performance and enhancing shareholder value. Ong said the retailer is simultaneously exploring several key initiatives, including the launch of new brands to capitalise on growth opportunities opportunities as well as potential horizontal and vertical acquisitions. Also a priority, he said, is warehouse automation to enhance cost optimization. As at September 30th, the group has 1,203 outlets and its store expansion for FY 2023 remains largely on track, with at least 57 stores to be opened across all three of its brands in the fourth quarter of this fiscal year. E-government services provider MyEG Services saw its third quarter FY 2023 earnings slump by some 20% to 120.1 million ringgit, which it said was mainly due to the one-off recognition of fair value gain in investment of 61.89 million ringgit from the listing of its investment in Agmo Holdings in the third quarter of FY 2022. Excluding this, it said operating profit after tax increased by 33.3%, 
on the back of the contribution from its Zetrix blockchain platform. Revenue was 19% higher at 194.1 million ringgit, thanks to the contribution from newly launched services from Zetrix and the sale of Zetrix tokens. Commenting on its prospects, it said it is cautiously optimistic on its outlook as it continues to introduce innovative services both locally and globally. It aims to do this by leveraging new technologies, specifically blockchain or Web 3.0. And with Zetrix coming online, it sees a huge potential to commercialize innovative services as Web 3.0 becomes widely adopted. It noted that Zetrix's integration with China's national blockchain platform will be the group's foray into the global market. Over 60% of government linked investment companies' funds are invested locally, with 15.8 to 62.7% invested in domestic equities from January 1, 2019 to August 31, 2023. Deputy Finance Minister Tu Stephen Sim said this is led by the EPF, with an average of 64.9% of its 1.096 trillion ringgit fund invested domestically. Of its entire fund base, 24.4% is invested in local listed equities. For PNB, whose total investment is 332 billion ringgit, an average of 84.3% is invested domestically, where 74.4% is in local equities. Quap holds 167 billion ringgit, with an average investment of 79.3% in the domestic market, where 45.2% is in the local share market. Lembaga Tabung Haji has 91 billion ringgit, and the average investment in the domestic market is 90.1%, with 18.3% in Malaysian equities. As for the LTAT, the Armed Forces Fund Board manages 10.5 billion ringgit, with the entire fund invested in the domestic market, he said, of which 52% is in Bursa Malaysia listed equities. <laughs> 